Now, the government has an ambitious program to irrigate over 1.2 million acres of land by the year 2027. In the last two years, the country has managed to increase land under irrigation by 11% as the nation moves away from reliance on rain-fed agriculture. Irrigation Principal Secretary Afantas Kimoto says the ultimate goal is for the country to put 1.8 million acres of land under irrigation by 2032 to close the food deficit gap. Abdiaziz Hashim had an exclusive interview with the PS to dissect the state of irrigation in the country. Take a look. Well, the expansion of irrigation schemes within the country has been the main focus of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, especially through the State Department of Irrigation, with the government targeting to ensure that the 700,000 acres that is currently under irrigation is expanded to 1.2 million by 2027 and in, at least by estimate 1.8 million acres by the year 2032. And who better to tell us about what is happening in the irrigation system of the country with this realized spearheaded by none other than the State Department of Irrigation. Joining us is none other than the Principal Secretary, State Department for Irrigation, CPA, Efantes Kamotho. Thank you so much, PS, for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much, PS. And maybe we start on that, PS. What will this expansion entail? Uh, when this administration, current kind of administration started, we picked, we had a baseline in terms of irrigation, which was 664,000. Mm -hmm. To date, two years down the line, we've been able to add an additional 69,000 acres under irrigation and also more, and most of it, actually 100% of it is actually under production. And uh, that now has taken us, just as you said, that has taken us now to 733,000 acres. Our plan, when the current admission started, the plan was to increase the area under irrigation up to 1.2 million. So towards that journey, we are left with 467,000 acres. And in that, eh, in the next three years, eh, we are confident that we'll, we'll be able to actualize that. I say this confidently because one, one of the projects that we are currently undertaking is the Galana Irrigation Project. Galana Irrigation Project currently, eh, in the next eh, one month, we are having a private party who will be starting production on 20,000 acres. That will be enabled by the normal river flow. But immediately after that, eh, we also started to construct the Galana Dam which has a capacity of uh, 350 million cubic. That will enable us to add the additional acreage of 180,000 to make it 200,000 acres. Then also, on, in uh, the still in, that is in uh, Kilifi and Tana River County. And still in Tana River County, we also have another big project called uh, Bura Irrigation Scheme. That's where we used to have the old Bura Irrigation Scheme, which currently is 12,000 acres, is what is under irrigation infrastructure. Now, given that you have elaborated the road to the 1.8 million acres by the year 2032, I'm sure the question of investment is very key, given that you're a CPA as well. You can tell us, in terms of investment between the national and the county government, are we going to like to see donors coming in to help in that particular expansion? And also, what are some of these technologies you'll be implementing on the ground to make this successful? So that whole plan, eh, the whole plan uh, has an estimated, uh, in terms of just the infrastructure alone, eh, the whole plan has an estimated of 1 trillion Kenya shillings. But our current budget uh, per year is around 20 billion per year. So in a, pl in a plan of to give it 10 years, eh, or maybe like, let's say now 8 years, because what 8 years is what is uh, basically remaining up to 2032 based on that plan. It means if we are to continue getting the same from, uh, from a GOK and development partner, GOK you normally get around 10 and, and development partners another 10. So that will give you approximately 20. So 20 times uh, 8, that will, will be talking about 160 billion. So you can say straight away there is a deficit of around 840. Even if you are to increase the uh, uh, government funding and also the development partners funding, probably you'll find yourself maybe at around uh, 700, at around 30 percent. So GOK and development partners probably will cover 30 percent of our plan. So 70 percent of our plan, we are mainly focusing on uh, raising money, catalyzing money from the private capital. From private capital that is, that is through PPP. Like for like for us to be able to do the area and irrigation up to the levels I've talked about. One of the example is Galana. Galana we having we are working with the, the dam itself will cost us at five billion. So we are working on a private party who will do the dam, then he'll pay himself through the tariffs. And the tariffs you're also getting another commercial partner who will come in 
put the irrigation infrastructure and do production and the process pay for the tariff. Then the tariff will pay the parcel for the dam. So that's why we're working with the PPP partners, both for production and doing the infrastructure. That, that's, that's the model we're also using in a, in a place like a high ground fall, whereby we also intend to do that. We plan to, to complete that by 2032. Yeah, we also in, intend to put 400,000 acres under irrigation in the, in the second phase. The second phase of our, of our, of our, of our plan, but uh, what will, will have been done by 2032 is approximately 120. Then the rest probably will now come after after that. Eh? But the dam will then will be complete again. There also, uh, that dam it's a plus is so component because also it's going to be a dam. It's a multi multi purpose dam which also has energy component. Uh, we will be producing uh, power as well, 1,000 megawatts per 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 per, per, per hour. So again, uh, like that one has a, is the total cost is coming to 2.5 billion dollars. So again, that also is being funded through PPP. Then also, we are also uh, focusing on also climate, fin cli climate uh, financing. So we intend to also uh, raise a green bond uh, through climate financing. And uh, we are also doing uh, what we call climate mitigation. Uh, we, are, we are doing a carbon project and a climate mitigation because rice methane mostly has a, lot of, uh, has a lot of carbon. So by so doing, we are trying to uh, put some mechanisms on reduction of rice methane. And in there, there's an opportunity for us to make uh, a little bit of uh, money from carbon credits. So those are the key areas that we're looking at as enhancing uh, PPP, pro, uh, PPP and, also, and also climate financing. That's what we're looking at now to help us balance the, the 70%. But also we're working closely with the counties because some of this irrigation infrastructure, most of the counties, we're asking them to also form the county irrigation development units. And those development units, that's where we'll have the extension officers based. So from county perspective, we are looking at them helping us on the service part of it. Because you know for us irrigation, we are developing the infrastructure, the water resource. Then once we've developed the water resource now, especially where you have the small gold irrigation schemes, eh, then we are looking at the county to come in and bring the extension services. Then uh, as irrigation, we'll also be doing the water management. So that's how the county will come in towards the end of the, of the, of the, of the part of our production, which is also very key towards making sure, because see our mandate is three. We normally have three mandates. One is water storage, because first of all, we store water, but we store water for what? Water for irrigation. Then that's when now the issue of irrigation infrastructure comes in. After, after irrigation infrastructure, then the next focus is production. So on the production, that's where we start partnering with the counties because they bring the extension officers and of course, you know, agriculture is, is, is devolved. So that's why we start now those collaborations. And also at that time, we also plug in uh, operators who now help us in maintaining the water efficiency of the, of the infrastructure. Then we also plug in aggregators, those are now private players, how they also come in. Aggregators, these are the people who come and work with the cooperatives to aggregate the products so that they can get the right market. Then they also help farmers in, in, the, in uh, setting up demonstration farms so that farmers can know exactly so that farmers can actually produce uh, a product which is market driven. Most of our irrigation schemes now, we are changing them to be market driven instead of just producing for the local consumption. And that, that way now they'll be sustainable and they'll have a lot of ownership. Mm -hmm. yes. And P.S., what can you do to attract many use? Because with this expansion, I'm sure you not only require experts in the field, the farmers, but it will create job opportunities, especially for the youth who are currently unemployed. So what will your ministry be doing to ensure at least these youths are attracted uh, to agriculture, given that the government is investing heavily when it comes to agricultural matters? Okay, so one, uh, you realize that especially in the small holder, where we have uh, the, the, the small holder where we do irrigation infrastructure and a small holder whereby people are having one acre two acres you find most of the time that most that that land is owned by the old people so what you're doing you're coming up with a framework of leasing so that now then we're also training the young people on how they can do business on that they know what you're calling agribusiness you realize that the young people yes some of them they may be good in farming. Like irrigation, irrigation is also enjoyable. The way it is, uh, is a new technology in a way, using the new technology, it's uh, not just the old way of doing things. Then uh, that by itself is attracting the youth. Then again, when you talk about the value add, if you're going to process, like you know, when you go down to that element of novel value addition processing, yeah, then the youth are also very attracted in that, in that part. Then also in extension, in extension services, which nowadays you also, even the method you're using for agriculture, like now in some of the areas we are using mechanized, mechanized agriculture. In mechanized agriculture you find now that also requires some knowledge, and that's where the youth come in. And a mechanized whereby you are trying to do precision, precision farming, whereby to increase the yield and at the same time uh, minimize the amount of input. That will now make more profit. So those, those are the areas where you're doing capacity building and uh, to the youth 
and there'll be very many opportunities for them. So both on the, at the production level, when they lease the land from the old people, then again, now uh, when we at the mechanization, because this mechanization uh, again will be driven by knowledge, so and they use some of them already have that knowledge, then again now on the value addition. Value addition again will create very many opportunities. And also on the aggregation, as I talked about earlier, that aggregation part, again, we will need those youths to come and aggregate. There will be other ones running the aggregation centers. We will also be setting up aggregation centers with the private parties. We will also be setting up warehousing, which will also, again, be, be that's the now component that those are now like new, new issues we are adding to that whole value chain. So I can say the youth eh, they'll plug in almost in every bit of the, the basically now will not just be produced, we'll be having a whole value chain. So that whole value chain will be able to plug the youth in in each and every of those parts. And we're also working, we're not just working in under, under isolation, we're also working closely with the Ministry of Agriculture because they're the ones we sold with the issue of the crop, the, the crop, crop variety. We're also working closely with the trade department because of the markets, because again, without markets, then we may be challenged for our farmers even to get, uh, to produce or get motivated to, to produce. So again, we're working very closely with the, with the trade department, which are helping us in aggregation. Uh, some of these aggregators are the ones who, who make sure even they get export market. So we also take advantage of the various agreements which have been signed by the Ministry of Trade. So, and also they're the ones also in charge of the warehousing, which is uh, currently, currently they have their housing receipting, which has been introduced, which is a good model whereby once the farmers take their products there, they can get their money almost instantly as the moon of their house is left now getting the market. The, yeah, so those are some of the interventions that you also, you're also working closely with the SME, uh, State Department of SME, who are also going to be giving farmers some little seed capital or f those who are not, who don't have enough sufficient funds for, for starting off the irrigation. Yeah, so that's it's a whole value chain and this will be a game changer for the country. Yeah. Thank you, Piers. Just in 30 seconds, just take a look at that camera. Talk to the farmers who will be watching you and, of course, who are currently watching you right now. In terms of what you'll be doing in those irrigation schemes, what assurances can you give the farmers and the country at large? Yeah, for the farmers, uh, for the farmers who are, who are with us today, I want to assure them that uh, currently in irrigation, we have two things that we are doing. One, we are changing all the pump-fed uh, irrigation schemes which are using diesel uh, to gravity. And uh, the ones which we are not able to change to gravity, we are changing them to solar. What that will mean to the farmer is that there is going to be a re big reduction of the cost of, of operation and maintenance. And that, th those proceeds will go back to the farmer to be able to buy more inputs and be able to increase his production. So we are looking to exciting times for the farmer. Then we are also working closely with aggregators so that we can make, we can make sure the aggregators uh, come with the extension officers and prescribe to the farmer the ex what the market needs so that the farmers can produce for the market instead of farmers producing just for consumption. We want a situation whereby a farmer can produce and make money from it and have make, make, uh, get their own food but also have a surplus. That's the plan that we are, we are working. Then we're also working with the extension officers to help the farmers come with a good cropping pattern which will ensure maxim maximum yield in their small pieces of land. Also, we are looking, uh, we also, uh, we'll also be doing um, a capacity building effort to ensure water efficiency. Because as you know, the country, we are, we are a scarce, water scarce country. So this, how we utilize our water, if we utilize it efficiently for production, then we'll, 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 have be, we'll, we'll be more sustainable. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, P.S. So that is the P.S. State Department for Irrigation CPA, Fantas Kimotha, just telling us the road towards 1.8 million of irrigation acres by the year 2032. What the government entails to do in partnership with the county government as well as key partners in the country. And of of course, that is what the government has been able to line up in terms of ensuring we are food secure and resilient even as we uh, go through climate change. And of course, all that will be included in what the principal secretary has just highlighted in terms of the irrigation schemes that are set to benefit uh, not just farmers, but the country at large. My name is Abdiaziz Hashim from Marsabit County.